Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another episode of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys swinging by the channel and spending some time with me today. I always uh, very grateful for that and never take it for granted. So welcome everybody to today's video. Um, guys, we're going to be talking about something that um, this has been coming up repeatedly in conversations I've been having with my Elite Series friends and some of my Bass Pro Tour friends is the whole idea, the conversation, are the major tournament organizations intentionally or unintentionally trying to force out the older veteran anglers and make way for the new you know, breed of tech savvy younger anglers out there. It's a, it's a conversation that needs to be had. This, 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 this is a topic that has been coming up uh, in front of me more and more and more often. So we're gonna get into that in today's video. I'm gonna give you guys my opinion and I'm curious to get your guys' feedback on that too. Also guys, just a real quick invitation out there. Anybody out there that's uh, hadn't had a chance to, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to Intuitive Angling if you wanna support, help support the channel. That's a good way to do that. It's free and easy, just hit that subscribe button. If I say something that makes you mad, you can always unsubscribe in any second, but that's a good way to help out. And also guys, a big massive thank you to everybody out there that's been using my uh, Tackle Warehouse link I put in each description to purchase your fishing tackle by using and bookmarking that link that you guys are really helping me and my family out. So much appreciated with that. Okay guys, uh, here's sort of the way the conversations have been going here. Um, you guys, very aware of this channel, what's happened the last 18 months, two years in regard, as far as the complete 100% takeover domination of this whole live scope forward facing sonar debacle. It's completely changed our sport for the worse. It's completely taken over the sport. It completely dominates the sport. And along the victims, along those roads, are the fact of the older veteran, not just old, I'm gonna say old, I'm talking about late 30s, 40s, 50s, veteran pros, hammers that have won millions in tournaments and won championships and angler of the years. They can't compete with it, guys. It doesn't make any difference. It's like um, all of those anglers out there, if, if you're one of those elite series pros or Bass Pro Tier guys that voted you know, against banning forward facing sonar, you basically just cut your own throat because you're the ones that's suffering from this because you can't compete with them, guys. If you're a 40 or 50 year old hammer out there, I don't care if you've tried to adopt or adapt and use forward facing in your sonar and your fishing, <clears throat> you can't do it, guys. You're gonna get your butts kicked and you will continue to get your butts kicked and your careers are going to fall into irrelevancy because you cannot compete with the younger crowd of anglers that don't know how to bass fish. The only thing they know is how to turn that you know, umbilical cord live scope on and kick the trolling motor in high and troll around in the middle of a cove all day until they see something on that unit. And that's all they do. They don't know anything else. They don't do anything else. You can't compete with that. It doesn't matter how good you are out there. So this is what has sort of happened here. That one of the, the conversation sort of goes like this with three or four of the guys I've been talking about. And if three or four of the guys are talking about this, you know other people are talking about it as well. There seems to be a, uh, like I said, whether it's intentional or unintentional, I don't know what it is. But if, if it is part of a business model, a lot of times that intentional. When you're trying to, a lot of these pros feel that they are trying to be pushed out of the sport or marginalized to make way for this new young group of anglers out there that are just all balls to the wall with technology. They feel that, um, that's the future of the sport. They feel the guys that have been in it for a long time, well, they're gonna croak off pretty soon anyway, so we don't need them. Um, let's, let's, uh, you know, let's go you know, all in on this whole tech thing. <coughs> so <clears throat> when you have a combination of electronic companies that are pouring millions, multiple, not one million, <clears throat> millions of dollars every year into sponsoring tournament organizations, and then you have, um, a group of anglers out there that don't know how to do anything except use forward facing sonar. That is a business model that they've, a lot of those tournament angler organizations have obviously tried to go down um, because they have not made any type of effort to uh, ensure, to ensure any type of career stability for the older anglers out there. And here's the thing about it, guys. It's like, you, the, one of the reasons I say this about the older anglers can't compete is like, when, you, when you're, when, if you're an angler in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, or whatever like that, 
you you rose to the top of the sport. The guys that are hammers, you rose to the top of the sport on traditional, you know, bass fishing techniques that that, that define the heritage of the sport. So even though that this has been thrust upon you, and even though that those anglers out there may be willing to want to learn it, it doesn't. It's it's not going to help you out any because any time that you have past experience to draw upon, that's going to cause a conflict in your mind. You're always going to be thinking if you're out there, you know, with your umbilical cord hooked up, live scope, and you're trolling around out in the middle of the cove out there, and it's it's not clicking, and you can't seem to find them or you know you're not as good as some 20 year old that never has caught a bass other than looking at it on an electronic screen. You have a tendency to want to go to the bank. You want to go throw that spinner bait. You want to flip that jig. And then your energies are divided and you simply cannot compete with those people out there that don't know anything else with that. And that seems to me the direction that the sport is going. That from all indications, as far as there being no effort whatsoever to put any type of limitations or any type of regulations on forward-facing sonar, what do you got there? A gun. Okay. A big one. Are you gonna try to you get me with it? Okay, well I'm gonna do this video and we'll get out there and play with it a little bit, okay? Well, right now. Yeah, just here in a second. <laughs> okay. Glad you got a Nerf gun here. He's wanting to play with it. But anyway, there's been there's been no effort to try to make a place for those older anglers out there. It's all been to try to uh, promote and endorse the younger, you know, uh, financially affluent type anglers out there. Because make no mistake about it, guys. If you're a 20 year old bass angler and you've got a hundred thousand dollar bass boat and a fifty thousand dollar truck, and you're spending a hundred thousand dollars a year fishing the major circuits out there, you didn't do that on your own. You, there, you, unless, you, unless you're a YouTube star or you won the lottery, your parent, the, the people's families helped them out to get there. And this is the road we're going on. There's this financial elitism that has been created in the sport through exploding technology and the increase in prices. So this really has made this an elite of sport out there. So the point of the video, guys, is, um, and that's one of the things I want to know about you guys, in light of everything that's happening, in the light of the complete total domination of the younger anglers that use nothing but live scope forward-facing sonar, and we see what it's doing and how it's marginalizing and making the well-known pros less relevant every tournament, do you think that's something that the tournament organizations are doing intentionally or unintentionally or whatever out there? Here's the one thing that I don't understand. If I, if I was a tournament organization and I ran a major tournament organization, first of all, you look at the, the uh, uh, discretionary income versus the demographic. Now, for the most part, the demographic out there that has the largest percentage of discretionary income to spend on fishing equipment are the 45 to 65 year old people out there. Those are the ones that have the biggest incomes out there. I never, I've never understood why tournament organizations didn't court that demographic out there, but, but, but all they do is court the younger anglers out there, maybe because they feel that if you're a younger angler, you've got a big slush fund to fish with or you wouldn't be out there. I'm not sure what the, the situation is with that. But anyway, um, what you're going to see, guys, is, and mark my words on this, unless the tournament organizations get a rein on this and put limitations. And I don't mean, when I'm talking about limitations, I don't mean limiting the number of live scope transducers you can have. Unless they take the live scope and forward facing sonar units off of tournament boats that are in the major tournaments out there, every single year you're going to see more and more and more veteran pros drop by the wayside. They're going to quit. They're going to retire they're going to become completely irrelevant. And within the next couple of years, you're going to have the major tournament organizations full of a hundred angler fields of people you've never heard about that get out there and all they've got on the rod, they all they've got on the deck is they got two or three spinning rods with the forward facing minnow and a little swim bait or something like that. And they've got six graphs on their boat and they put their boat in the water and they kick that trolling motor on high and they just buzz around the creeks and the cove mouths all day long with their head glued down to that screen, never taking it off the screen ever um, with creating some exciting television, you know, filming with that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that part of this whole thing is, 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 is an, an effort to push the older anglers out there because they just, 
their their time is gone by and by the wayside out there? Do you think that's what's going on here? Because um, you know, I to be honest with you, I I gotta agree with that. I gotta agree. I, I'm not speaking for any tournament organizations. I'm speculating here, but in my opinion out there, the, from the, from what I have seen as far as the actions and the rules and regulations and the direction it's going and the normalization, I don't think they mind if the older anglers are gone. I don't. I, I, I just don't think they see that. I don't think that they, they can see the value within those older anglers in the world of technology that they have created, guys. Now, this is something a lot of people think about this whole forward-facing sonar crap. Is that it's something that's just it's just a phase the sport is has has to go through and it's inevitable and you can't stop it and you can't stop progress. Make no mistake about this, guys. The only reason that you're hearing me once a week talk about this stuff, and the only reason you're hearing people, you know, mad about it and upset and the sport is so divided is because the tournament organizations decided to make it that way. It's so simple. To write a rule saying forward-facing sonar will not be allowed in our tournament competitions. You can use it in practice. You can use it for fun fishing. You can have your umbilical cord on when you want to go crappie fishing. But when you're bass fishing in a major tournament, you are going to be a real bass fisherman. You're going to act like a real bass fisherman, and you're going to fish like real bass anglers do. You're not going to become some video gamer out there and turn this sport into something that is an insult to all the anglers that came before us here completely. And if you're one of the anglers out there, if you're one of those dudes, and I know who you are, guys, because I've been in the trenches with you for 40 years. If you're one of those guys out there that have had a successful career prior to forward-facing sonar, and you're not standing up against this, and you're complicit, and you're normalizing it, you are doing nothing but not only hurting your own career, you're putting your career into irrelevancy, and you are harming the future and the past tradition of the sport. It's an it's an insult to the sport of bass fishing if you try to enable and encourage and condone and try to sugarcoat and try to think say that forward-facing sonar is great and anyone that says something bad about it is a whine and cry baby. You're you're just you need to completely reevaluate your viewpoint on bass fishing. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. You think they're trying to push the old guys out? Be curious to hear from y'all and we'll talk later.